From the Nullarbor to Grampians, from Ayers Rock to the snow, by Motorhome to Cradle Mount, there's no place we won't go. So jump on board and grab a seat, it's sure to be a ride. Just step outside your fly screen door, step outside with pride. Get ready for a jam-packed show, the destination set. A journey that will take you round the great Australian doorstep. The great Australian doorstep. Welcome to this week's episode of The Great Australian Doorstep. Now, we're doing a motorhome tour from Melbourne to Darwin. Yeah, but over the next couple of weeks or several weeks, couple of months, you'll see some magnificent destinations. We take the New Age van to South Australia. We take the Coleman tent all the way up to Cairns. But first off, it's all about the motorhome tour. When considering travelling around Australia next time and you want to hire a motorhome, you must check out Let's Go. It's a new motorhome hire company with great vehicles. Now these vehicles are complete with everything you need inside and out and are very easy to drive and very well maintained. You only need a normal car license and within hours everyone has the hang of it. We are off and cruising along. The advantages of travelling in a convoy is that you have the security of a group around you to help out whenever you need. It is only day one and we're driving hundreds of kilometres from Melbourne to the South Australian town of Bordertown. Welcome to Bordertown, the home of Bob Hawke. Now, Bordertown is over the Victorian and South Australian border, 19 kilometres to be exact, and it's famous for the white kangaroos, a definite must stop for all travellers. They are housed here with a couple of peacock families. The Bordertown Wildlife Park was developed in 1968 and initially held a section of Australian wildlife. Grey kangaroos, emus, ducks and other native animals. As you can see, the white kangaroo or the albino kangaroo, the normal colour is absent. The kangaroo has white fur and sometimes, now this is not always, pink eyes. We leave the ruse and take a quick diversion into the township as it was once home to the great Australian Prime Minister, Bob Hawke. Now he can scull a yard glass in just over 11 seconds and locals say he nearly drowned as 11 year old in a local dam. Thankfully for Australia, he survived. From here, we go direct to McLaren Vale in South Australia, the home of some of Australia's great wines. It's not a race, but when you travel as a convoy, it's about taking in as much as you can. McLaren Vale is a famous wine region, and with a winery tour booked in later today, it's hard to hold everyone back. We drive straight to the caravan park, quickly get set up, and start looking for the bus to take us to the winery. McLaren Vale Caravan Park is set on a lovely backdrop of vineyards and a dam, with cabins, large sites, very clean amenities, and plenty of room for the kids to run around. It makes your stay memorable. It's a great spot for the young kids, and an adult wonderland is just outside the front gates. McLaren Vale is a nice quiet town of beautiful cafes, restaurants and wineries. The main street is set up for the traveller. This is really the ideal location as it's also only kilometres from a popular beach and short stroll from your holiday park. This unique marriage of a premier wine region and a beach lifestyle has created this melting pot of all things culinary. Wine and artistic and as a result world-class chefs choose to live and work in McLaren Vale. Local producers and chefs are blessed with the ideal ingredients that help maintain McLaren Vale's position as one of Australia's premier food regions. Over the June long weekend each and every year, the small town of McLaren Vale will be inundated with visitors, including myself, keen to try the fabulous wines and gourmet food of the region during the McLaren Vale Bank SAC and Vines Festival. It's an all-in celebration of the numerous winemakers to the region, from Alpha Box and Dice, Chapel Hill and Maxwell's, which we will tour later on. Yet, the Sea and Vines Festival gives you a chance to meet and talk to the winemakers, like here with Paul Petenga from Salic Hill Wines. Now, just to start with something really, really young, and we'll move from maybe the babies through to something a little older so you can see the evolution of what's going on. So this is this year's, so this is 2013 yep. Grenache. I've only been in barrel for like two months or so, so it's a baby, baby. Little, little bit spritzy, 
Yeah. It's still doing a little bit of malic. So there's a secondary fermentation that happens, and it's a bacterial thing, and it converts the malic acids to lactic acids, which makes it softer and rounder in the mouth when it's finished, but it lets off a lot of carbon dioxide. So at the moment, it's got a lot of spritz and a lot of bubbles and all that sort of gear going on there. So we've gone forward another year, or back another year, so this is gonna be a little bit more mature. So this is a completely different beast. Yeah, it's kind of sweeter. Oh, I like that. Females have a heightened sense of, of, of smell. Really? To guys, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's looking pretty good at the moment. Pretty happy with that. For three days, there is a variety of events to choose from, ranging from simple tastings, to full blown marquees with several tastings. You can tour a winery or rev things up listening to live bands. For me, I like testing my own palate and learning, smelling and just chilling out in another great Australian backdrop. It's time we get out and test these wines for ourselves. So it's off to a McLaren Vale favourite and a very popular winery around the world, Maxwell's Wines. We are met on arrival given our own table, and then it's time to learn about the brilliant winery. And they will ferment in open fermenters, or they can ferment in tanks as well, but they ferment in contact with the skins. With the whites, we have to separate them first, so they go into a press, and we separate the juice from the skins. Because obviously to make red wine, the colour comes from the skin. After many years, you do get to know what oak's going to work better with what grape variety, how long to leave it in, all that sort of thing, just like a chef does with their own recipes. So, but that's the learning curve for young winemakers. That we still have two weeks to go in the motorhome, we load up on supplies just in case there is a drought. The Great Australian Doorstep. Great Australian Doorstep. Hello and welcome to Kangaroo Island. Now this is the third largest island off the Australian coast. It's 155 kilometres long, 55 kilometres wide, and we're going to take a look around this island and see exactly what is it famous for. Well, I want to know one thing. Is it famous for the kangaroo? Today sees us all up early. Leaving the motorhomes behind, we board a bus that will take us to the Sealink Ferry Terminal an hour's drive away as we venture to one of Australia's most magical islands, the iconic Kangaroo Island. It might have been the kangaroo or the kangaroo of the sea because we found the sea lions, which is probably the most popular animal here so far on King Island. But you don't make sudden moves, don't call out to them, just pass straight past if we could. A couple hundred metres offshore, there are waves breaking. They're breaking on a rocky reef. That reef, we think, is the reason there are seals here and nowhere else on Kangaroo Island. Back in 1803, um, Matthew Flinders found Kangaroo Island. He found all these seals, all every beach, he said, had seals. All the waters filled with whales. Obviously not the case anymore. Uh, he went back to Sydney and said, hey guys, guess what I found? They came back and started hunting them. Between 1803 and 1833, sealing was completely legal, and they came over and they took something near half a million seals from South Australian waters, nearly wiped this species out. Uh, we now have approximately 14,000 of this species left in the wild. Flinders Chase National Park, renowned as a sanctuary for native Australian animals, including kangaroos, wallabies, koalas and echidnas. Our tour of the park will take you to the rugged southern coastline for a walk on Remarkable Rocks and also Admiral's Arch. Remarkable Rocks provides great photographic opportunities and stunning sea views. Admiral's Arch Boardwalk takes you down a rugged cliff face to reveal the spectacular rock archway. These rocks are truly remarkable, and to think that they have been here for hundreds, thousands, quite possibly millions of years. It is a fantastic photo opportunity that you will not want to miss out on. It is also a natural nursery and safe haven for playful long-nosed fur seals that can be seen resting, swimming and playing in the waves and on the rocks below. But it is definitely the three different seal colonies that will steal your heart. They are so cute and in great numbers that you can honestly sit here all day watching them frolic in the water, resting in the sun, or the little ones annoying their parents. 
they're worth their weight in gold. Here's another handy travel tip. The secret to successful camping trip is research and planning. Make sure you research the area you are intending to visit and this will allow you to prepare for the conditions you are most likely to encounter. Coastal areas, they tend to be sandier with stronger winds, meaning you'll need more guy ropes, pegs and often windbreaks. Inland, the ground tends to be a lot harder where you need to ensure you have the correct pegs to handle the harder ground. Researching where you're going to stay will also provide some valuable answers. Whether you need to take your own barbecue, or will they be provided? Are there kids' play areas, clean amenities, and laundry facilities? So much to consider. It's the five P's. Precise preparation prevents poor performances. The Great Australian Doorstep. The Great Australian Doorstep. Welcome back to the Great Australian Doorstep as we take you on a let's go motorhome hire motorhome trip from Melbourne to Darwin. Still at this point no kangaroos but one thing we have found out here on Kangaroo Island alone 250 different species of birds. Meet some of the most deadliest creatures in the world and we are talking about birds. Uh, she has a little siesta for the rest of the day and that's all she has to do, so pretty good life. I might come back as a barn owl, I think. <laughs> nice little lifestyle. Meet Pat and Handel and Al, learn about falcons and how smart they are. Uh, they're like a predatory parrot, essentially. Uh, really smart, really bubbly. Say hello to Omen, the amazing looking owl. Now this bird is rarely seen, but here you can actually put on a glove and go as far as having a hold. Then what's a bird show without kookaburras? Banjo and Clancy. Two laughing kookaburras are always a good crowd favourite. <laughs> Black breasted buzzard. Now this is different. When he's up above you, those two white panels shine up quite easily, but yeah, wherever he goes, everyone's harassing him. Named Slim, this bird was actually bred in captivity from the only captive breeding pair in the world and he just loves showing off what he can do with an emu egg. Then it's a goshawk, which is most impressive. Look at the bright red piercing eyes. Those eyes are for one thing and that's dinner. Yet for most of us, the most impressive, a juvenile female wedge tail eagle. These are huge and are even better when seen close up. The full experience of being able to be close up and personal at the same time of learning so much about these amazing birds and their background is a must do for anyone coming to Kangaroo Island. And a great tip, when you see these guys, these big massive wedge tail eagles in your travels or on your travels, maybe enjoying a little bit of roadkill. Now slow down and be careful as these birds take a while just to get going from a stationary start. Finally, I've answered my big question. Is Kangaroo Island famous for kangaroos? Yes, it is. The Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park is a must do. As you see, a diversity of the Australian animals, something personally I've never seen anywhere else in all my travels around Australia. We began walking through the feeding area to feed a few wallabies and kangaroos that come up wanting to eat. They knew exactly what we had to offer. All friendly, adorable, and of all color. You don't see many white kangaroos around, trust me. It was hard to work out who loved it more, if it was the adults or the children. With many different animals in several different enclosures, a wombat to different birds, what we loved most was there was just so many options for personal hands-on experiences with no crowd. Lizards, crocodiles, snakes. The keepers here at Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park are friendly and passionate about the work they do. But best always comes last. The ever cute, the ever cuddly, and the fascinating koala. This is the first time I've been so close to the Australian icon. They were happy, alert, active, and won the hearts of our whole group. Another quick, easy, delicious stove on the road recipe, mastered by Spider. 
We're gonna cook some sausages, flavored sausages, quite easy, good snack. You can cook them on the barbecue, put them on some fresh crusty bread, or you can just cook them in a fry pan, whichever way you want. Quick, easy, and simple. Cut little slits in each sausage for better cooking and easy cutting later on. I'm cooking up the German bratwurst, the chili cheese kranksky, and the Spanish chorizo. The Eve Small Goods are the best in Australia and it comes with a warning, they are highly addictive. Place them on a barbecue or easily just cut them up and fry them off in a fry pan. A lot of people don't understand, a lot of these recipes you can actually use at home if you're having friends and guests around. And you know what, it's what people eat. You don't need all your onions and your gherkins and this and that, just the flavours in the food itself, don't spoil it. Cut up a stick of fresh crusty bread then with nothing else other than the magnificent flavours of these Eve sausages, serve on the crusty fresh bread. Easy slicing along the slits already prepared earlier. If no bread, just eat straight out with your fingers. A lot of smiles and not one person complained. It's easy, it's quick, they can be stored perfectly for camping, they last for weeks if stored properly, and most importantly, people eat them. All the Stove on the Road recipes are available in full on our website, greataustraliandoorstep.com. The Great Australian Doorstep. The Great Australian Doorstep. Welcome back to the Great Australian Doorstep as we do a Let's Go Motorhome Hire motorhome trip from Melbourne to Darwin. Now, the Let's Go Motorhome company is fairly new and is part of Jayco. And honestly, they have the, be they have the best rigs. Yeah, and uh, yeah, what we love about the motorhome tour is, of course, the security of others. But if you don't, yeah. get your van, hitch it up and head out and see Australia because it is one of the most magnificent places during the dry, during the winter, whenever. Just yes. get out there and see it. So now we say goodbye to McLaren Vale after a very pleasant stay at the McLaren Vale Caravan Park. We are lucky in Australia as our roads are top notch, which makes motorhome touring so much easier. We have opted to miss out the hustle and bustle of Adelaide City and taking a detour out through the stunning Adelaide Hills. Welcome to Harndorf. Now this place is only 25 minutes from Adelaide and is one of Adelaide Hills most famous towns. Now it's one of 17 historical areas of South Australia. But the only way to have a good look around Harndorf is by foot. Travel up one side of the road and travel back the other. I know for a fact that the 100 year old elm trees lining the main street will impress you, but it's the old building still in excellent condition, as you can see behind me, which will blow you away. It's all about the German influence that attracts tourists to this fantastic European town right here in Australia. With its fascinating buildings and interesting locals, this town is vibrant and bursting with energy. You can just about get anything from this little tourist town, from the original handmade leather goods, gourmet foods, or eat like a king or queen with plenty of cafes and restaurants. And just like in Germany itself, Handorf will make you cuckoo with a world famous cuckoo clock. Back in 1750, in the depths of the Black Forest in Germany, the very first cuckoo clock was made. They would make them in the freezing winter months and sell them in the beautiful summer months right across Europe. And when you're in Handorf, you need to come to the Handorf Clock and Collectibles shop to buy yours. And there's also some delicious little treats hiding in the corner of the shop. While Cherie found it very difficult to pull herself away from the fudge, for me, the real taste of Handorf is the traditional made salamis. There are so many to choose from, it's worth taste testing a few. Don't be shy, with the hot salami, my recommendation. I love a salami or a metwurst, but that was hot, real hot. They call it a bum burner for a reason though. <laughs> it's done 24 hours, I'll tell you if that reason is correct. mouth is on fire, but that is part of the fun that is Handorf. But there is only one place for him to cool down, and that is at the pub with a great German beer. You always finish where you started, so here we are at the Handorf Inn. Now this place is traditionally known for its food and of course its beer. It's got five of German's greatest beers on tap, two of them which are, of course, the Hofbrau Original and the Hofbrau Dunkel which means dark. But if it's not the beer you're after and it's the food, 
this place is the place to go. People in Germany and outside of Germany say that this is the best food outside of Germany. Why? Because it has German sausages made from fourth generation German butchers. That's why. Now, if you have missed any of our previous episodes or series, you can always download them at iTunes. I don't know how, but where? Just go to iTunes and put in the search engine, Great Australian Doorstep. See you next week.